Welcome everyone, this is Viking, and today we're going to take a look at the Spitfire. This is a wonderful plane. It's pretty easy to start up. Very analog, very old school. Turn on the lights in the cabin. Open a couple of switch covers. I want to put that forward, put the rudder trim so that the R in rudder is kind of standing up in the 12 o'clock, maybe a little bit to the left of that. Then we turn on our magnetos. And we put our flaps in the down position. We advance the throttle until this light comes on. And then we pull it right back down to nothing. And we turn on the navigation lights. And we set the parking brake. All right, so far so good. Now we unscrew this thing with, with the scroll wheel and we work it five or six times. Two, three, four, five, six. Screw that back on. Get the fuel pump into the up position. Then we operate a hand pump to relieve the fuel pressure problem. So you basically just click on this little wobble until the light goes away. It has gone away, so we're good there. And just real quick, I'm gonna set up my gun sight. Not that it's that useful to dial these things in, but I've got the wingspan and the expected distance in there. Uh, fuel tank pressure on. And I think that's pretty much it. So we're going to start the engines by pressing this button and this button simultaneously and holding them down. And then we're going to set the fuel mixture um, to, uh, to run. Sorry, we're going to set the fuel mixture to run once the engine starts catching. So, oh, and also just to, uh, uh, just to sort of fix the noise, I will close the canopy ahead of time. But I want to do that externally so you can see him duck his head. There we go. All right. Let's keep the parking brake set while we start the engine. Cut off to run. Close these two switch covers. And give it just the barest little bit of throttle. This is your RPM gauge. If this goes over 20, you'll nose forward and your propeller will strike the ground. Um, so be very careful. I'm going to spin us around, but I'm actually what I'm first going to do is pull up my control overlay. You see how the rudder is tied to the brakes? If I go rudder right, I get less brake on the left wheel. If I go rudder left, I get less brake on the left wheel. Um, that's how this thing steers on the ground, and it's very touchy. It'll, uh, it's the source of a lot of frustration. So don't worry too much about how the spit handles on the ground. Um, she is a dream in the air. All right, so I've got myself Turned 90 degrees to the runway here, still got the brakes set. I'm going to release the brakes. And then you can see on my controls how I'm trying to work the rudder and the brake pedal. To get this plane to turn. Now, it's hard to see past the nose, so getting lined up on the runway is a little bit tricky. But I think I've basically accomplished it, so I'm going to gently hit the brakes. Bring this thing to a safe stop. And, you know, you shouldn't really be allowed to do this, but I'm going to check the external view. Actually, that's not... That's, that wasn't, I was all nice and lined up, but unfortunately I left the throttle just a ginch high and didn't set the parking brake, so it ruined it. So, fuck that, I'm going to turn on the gun sight, and I'm going to stand on the rudder a little bit, the right rudder, as I bring this boost pressure up to 12. And then at 120, I'm going to take off. I'm actually off the runway and onto the onto the green here, but it scarcely matters. Mm. 
and then as I raise my gear and flaps, I will. The nose is going to pitch up, and the thing's going to swing left. And so you got to be ready to counter the pitch up. And you still, as you speed up, you got to stand on the right rudder a little bit. Now, since we're up to flying speed here, I'm going to bring my RPMs down to 2650 and my boost pressure down to plus seven. And that's a good. Uh, that's a good sort of cruising speed. That's not going to overheat your engine, but it's still reasonably quick. And we're going to fly a heading of 120. That's this down here, 120. And now that we're up over 200 uh, miles an hour, I'm going to try and even out the trim. All right, flying pretty close to straight and level hands free. So I'm going to enter a gentle climb. And I'm going to try and get up to pretty close to 6,000 feet before we uh, before we get over there. Oh, by the way, um, might be time to fence in here. Lights out. Master arm off, or on, I mean. And we're going to do a quick gun check. 20 mil. And 30 cal. All right, guns work. I think I might see some planes in the distance. So anyway, we're going to maintain a, a gentle rate of climb, try to keep our speed above 180. I'm doing a little bit of light rudder work to, uh, to keep it level. And I see we're about to go below 180, so I'm going to bring the nose down just a little bit. We've got our climb indicator over here. We're doing almost 2,000 feet per minute, so that's plenty. Now, altimeter says we're at 5,000 feet. F10 says we're pretty close. Coming up on 6,000 feet, and I see I got four red dots in the distance there. Spotting is very difficult in DCS, and so I'm going to give myself some dots while I demo this bit. And I'm barely doing any control inputs at all right now. A little bit of uh, trim adjustment as we fly. But for the most part, like right now, my hands are off the stick in the rudder. Like this, this plane is just flying itself. It's rolling ever so slightly to the right, but you can barely tell. It'll fly straight enough that you can pay attention to something else for a minute. It won't fly straight enough on its own that you can go to the bathroom. Now we're going to be shooting down some Falk Wolf 190s. It's a pretty durable airplane. These guys have kind of split up a little. But 
but I'm really looking forward to diving down on him and getting this fight started because I really want to show what the Spitfire can do, especially in a turning fight. Now I'm going to bump my RPMs uh, from 2650 to 2850. That's in anticipation of bringing the boost pressure, which should have been at 7. Now it's back at 7. That's in anticipation of bringing the boost pressure up to 12, which is sort of like full military power. If you keep this up for the speed up for too too long, like for for 10 15 minutes, um, you could overheat your engine. But basically, this is uh, this is attack speed. All right, let's pick on this dude. I think he's actually going slower than I expect, so I'm dialing back the boost pressure. Because sure enough, I'm going so fast that I can't follow him without blacking out. Very important not to black out at this altitude. Alright. I lost enough speed that I can make the turn now, so I'm going to get back on his tail. I'm going to fly lag pursuit. I'm going to fly lag pursuit. I'm not going to try and pull right up on him. And then, as he runs out of altitude and airspeed, that's when I'm going to pounce. Alright, I'm going way too fast. So I'm backing off on the throttle a lot. And then... Hit him with a burst of 30, 30 caliber. Bringing the speed back up. He's a bit far out. I don't like leading at this distance. I think, yeah, I mean, like the nose base uh, of the aircraft basically gets in the way. So you got to get in fairly close to, to make a, uh, a shot that you can be confident will connect. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Rudder, rudder. Okay, that was a good burst. Let's actually just cheat a little bit. We're going to pause it and have a look at that dude. That's me chasing him, and I see that we've shot up his engine a little bit. We've shot up his wing. We've certainly got his tail because we weren't leading him enough. So that's good. We're making progress on this guy, and I haven't used any 20 millimeter on him yet. Whoops. Clipped him there. Got him again. This guy is shot to shit with uh, 30 caliber, so my next burst is going to include a little bit of 20 mil. Because I want to try and get rid of this guy. He should be done already. See how the nose gets in the way? That's irritating. A little bit of 20 there for him. This guy should be really, really done right now. Finally. Boy, that took up more ammo than I was expecting. At this point, we're just going to have to gain altitude. Engine temperature is climbing up a little bit, but it's not in the danger zone at all. Could have sworn I saw another one of them around here somewhere. Oh well. I see two in front of me, and that'll do. That said, I am going to bring it back to cruising speed here. 2650 and plus 7, because I want to cool the engine down a little bit.
Also, it's never a bad idea to change your speed from time to time when anti-aircraft artillery is popping up all around you. Coming close to that guy. Back up to 2850 on the RPMs and plus 12 on the boost. I'm going to fly a leg pursuit on this guy again. I'm going to stay behind him. Man, I don't think he even sees me. is almost a problem because he's faster than I am and I think he might be pulling away. Maybe I should try and pull lead pursuit. Close the gap between us. Alright, here we go. I think he noticed me. Whoops. Alright, trying for some 20 mic. Whoops. That cost him something, and he's done. That... is a bailed out pilot. Wait, where'd the shoot go? There should be a parachute around here. I saw him throw off the canopy. Oh, maybe that's it. Huh? No, lost it again. Well, I'm sure there's a parachute back there somewhere. I saw him throw his, uh, his canopy away. Actually, this one looks like it might be closer. Oops. Engine's getting a little bit warm. I would have liked to have cooled it off before going after this guy. Whoa. Too much. Too much. Lost a lot of airspeed on that one. But even though I'm only doing 140 miles per hour, I can still turn like a boss. I mean, that's the Spitfire for you. Wait, where'd my guy go? Is that him? Okay, engine's actually starting to cook a little bit here, so we're gonna... Just fly around a bit in, at cruise speed, and we'll, we'll speed up if it turns out we need to. Looks like we might actually need uh, proper power at this point. So engine temperature be damned. I'm going to see if I can do this guy with just the 30 cal that I have left remaining. I'm going to try to save all my 20 millimeter if possible. too far away. I shouldn't have even tried that. Just stay in lag pursuit. Let him use up his energy.
having a little trouble catching up to him. It's one of the areas where the Spitfire is a little bit behind the uh, the German planes and the, and the American ones, for that matter. At least in DCS world. try and get lead without losing sight of him because I'm just not catching up. You know what? Fuck it. Full power. Eee, my engine temperature this is going to be bad. I really got to get this done quick. Okay, backing off the power. There we go. Oh, I'm out of 30 cal completely. I think I knocked a piece of them off. Yeah, he's missing an aileron there on the left. How's my engine doing? It's really getting warm. Yeah! Whoo! Engine's on fire. All right, I have one of the downsides of the Spitfire is there's no ammo gauge, so I have absolutely no idea how much ammo I've got left. I know I'm out of 30 cal, and I know I've been using the 20 a little bit. I think I've got enough 20 to take out one more guy. Speaking of, where is that guy? Oh, and also my engine is in rough shape. I'm cooling this sucker way down, way, way down. All right, this is this is the fuel economy setting. It's uh, 2350 on the RPMs and uh, zero on the boost. You're not going to go very fast in this mode, but if you're uh, trying to cross the channel and you don't want to run out of gas over the ocean, then uh, these are the engine settings for you. And it should help me to cool off my engine before I catch up with this dude. Oh, is he... I wounded him. Did I wound him? I didn't even wound him and he's coming in for a landing, that pussy. Alright. Fine. Let's see if I can strafe that jerk. Engine's cooled down enough anyway. This is fine. What a wiener. I'm trying to land. Give me a break. Alright. Cutting things back to economy settings again because this dude is going to be going slow. And I don't want to just shoot past him. I want to put those 20 millimeters right in his cockpit. Boom! Ho oh, ho! That was such a good hit, if I do say so myself. Whew! Alright. Let's head north to the coast and then west back to base.
engine's actually nice and cool, so I'm going to go ahead and put it up to cruising speed, 2650 RPMs, plus 7 on the boost. And because there's still anti-aircraft uh, following us, I'm going to stay nice and low to the ground. Actually, you know what? Forget close to the ground. Let's take a look at the scenery. Don't have to gain much altitude to do that. Look at all that hedgerow country. Look at how this thing can turn. I mean, it's not even going that fast. Just out of curiosity, how much more 20 mil did I have left? Okay, so, a fair bit. Probably could have done another two planes with that. I don't know if you see those blooms and black blooms in my crosshairs, but uh, those are the uh, the internal explosives on the 20 millimeter rounds going off in midair. Airfields are all dirt. <laughs> Nothing's paved. Now I'm heading north, and I want to go west, so obviously that means I take a left turn at the coast, but if I were to, uh, to get my directions wrong, and if I happen to turn the wrong way, I want to show you just how quick that Spitfire can do a 180, because it's incredible. And like I say, we're not even going that fast. Like, this is the, this is the, the cruising speed. This will not overheat your engine, but it's still pretty quick, so... I'm forgetting which direction's which. I'm headed this way. Already seems like a pretty tight turn. And that's when I realize, oh wait, I'm headed towards Germany now. I certainly want to be headed towards... Whoa, fuck me. That was, uh... <laughs> that was me not paying attention is what that was. All right. Try that again. We're headed along the coast. We want to turn around, roll it over. Well, I don't know what what the problem is here. It's actually it's having trouble performing. I wonder if it's a I wonder if it's a speed thing. before I was actually having a pretty easy time making a turn like that. Okay, now we're up to 260. Roll it over. 
pull, pull, pull. That's 180. That's 360. It can really turn on a dime. But now comes the hardest part, the landing. Gonna drop RPMs down to 2350 and boost to zero. That's the fuel economy mode. Keeps us nice and slow. And I can sort of recognize like uh, a pair of estuaries here. Might be hard to uh, to tell if you're not used to the to the terrain, but uh, there's an estuary here and there's an estuary there, and that means my airfield is about there. And we're doing a nice mellow 180 miles an hour right now. It'll be easy to lose a bit of that speed as we come in for a landing. Don't want to don't want to come in hot. This thing has no air brakes, you know, so it's uh something where you got to bleed the speed off before you get there. Oh. Is this it? Yeah, this must be it. And as you can see, I've already accelerated up to like 210 miles per hour. And that's with the boost at actually like about minus one right now. So we're kind of at like the minimum power that the engine can have and still be forcefully turning the, the propeller blades. And you can't drop your gear or your flaps unless you're below 150 miles an hour. So I'm basically putting the engine to, to idle. And now we're at 150, so flap down, gear down. Don't accelerate past 150. You're going to want to pitch up, trim. Oops, got my nose too low there. All right, don't fall below 120 like I just did. Just do what you got to do to keep your airspeed between 120 and 150. And then we're more or less lined up on the runway, I see. So, I'm going to straighten us out. Cut power. Okay, now we really cut power. A little bit of left rudder to compensate for the torque difference, and flaps up because it prevents bouncing, or at least minimizes it. Whoops, I went to put my flaps down. Dummy. Might not have bounced so much if I hadn't. Whoops. Whoops a daisy, whoops a daisy, whoops a daisy, whoops a daisy. Okay, that was a little bit rough because I scraped the wing, but uh, actually I'm going to get off the runway entirely here. All right, there we go. Nice little 360 spin at the end for the park job. And get that canopy open. Oh, I never turned on the radio. That is the radio on, and that's off.
Mixture off, fuel pump off, up there, and toot toot. And we just put on the parking brake. And that's it. We've uh, done a mission in the Spitfire. It's a beautiful airplane, a lot of fun to fly. I definitely recommend checking it out. Cheers.